Hi everyone, uh, Robert here with Odd Random Thoughts and I've got another Photoshop tutorial for you today. Um, in this tutorial we're gonna go over a couple of different methods for creating custom picture frames for your digital images. Okay, now the first thing that we want to do of course is we want to access an image. We'll just pick this uh, image here of this yellow flower a picture I took with my Canon digital camera and what you want to do first is you want to go ahead and come over here to your layers and right click on your layer with your image and go to convert to smart object okay now essentially what this does is it creates two layers of the photo one is the original image but if you drag that out of the way you'll see you have a blank canvas behind your image. Okay, so we'll put that back in place and then what we want to do is we want to make that canvas larger than the actual photo. So how we do that is we'll come over here to image and go to canvas size. Now we'll first want to change from inches to percent and we'll change each of these values for width and height to 120 percent okay now you can see that gives you a nice even border around your photo now in order to put an image on this border first we need to create a new layer so in order to do that you want to hold control down and then click down here to create a new layer now holding control all that does is it puts the new layer at the very bottom of all of your layers so your image remains on top so now since you still have this layer selected hold shift and hit backspace and that's going to open up your fill box here you want to be sure that you have pattern selected in the drop down and then it gives you several different custom patterns to choose from now if you don't like all of these that it has you can click this little arrow right here and you can go down to some other uh, other types of textures and patterns that you can use we'll go to let's just take texture fill click OK alright now you have several different ones to choose from we'll just pick one here um, let's go with this one you click OK voila now you have a custom border or picture frame around your digital image. Then of course you can go to File, Save As and you want to pick JPEG image and you can name your photo and save it. Okay, now that's one method for doing it simply and quickly um, but as you can see it has sharp edges around the photo. It all looks kind of one-dimensional. So let's get rid of this one and we'll go ahead and open that same image again but this time we're going to do it a little bit differently so just like in the previous uh, image we did we still want to click over here and convert this to a smart image which of course is giving us our canvas okay but now this time we want to pick out a section of this photo that that we want to focus on so let's come over here to our rounded rectangle tool and we'll just pick out the area of this photo that we want to keep so let's say we'll keep that area now you see it's not centered on the image so what you want to do is you want to come get your select tool and hit control A to select everything on the artboard then you'll notice you have a vertical align click that and then click your horizontal alignment tool and that will align the box perfectly within the photo then if you hit control D that will release all those objects now notice it's a little thinner at the top and bottom than it is on the sides so let's click on that that black mask and hit control T and if we hold down shift we can bring these in just a little bit so it evens things up just a bit 
Okay. Then hit enter. And we'll go ahead and hit control A and we will center everything again. And control D to release. <clears throat> okay. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure our image is the topmost layer. So let's just grab this layer and bring it down below. Now you can still see the boundary box that goes around your mask, but we need to get rid of all this border that's going around the outside edge. So in order to do that, we need to create a new layer. If you hold control and click here to create new layer, then there's a little shortcut that I have. Uh, you want to be sure that you have your mask selected and then hold the Alt key and put your cursor right between your mask and your photo layer and click once and that will clip all the excess on the outside of your mask. Now we're going to go about this just like we did in the previous example. Uh, you want to pick your layer that you added and then hold shift and hit the back key and this is going to bring up once again our patterns. So let's go here and let's pick a different one this time. Let's use nature patterns. And click OK. Now we have several to choose from. I think one uh, that would look good we'll use this one and that creates our picture frame. Now here's a little trick. If you click on your mask be sure you click on this box here you'll see in the mask properties you have feather. If you move that in you'll see that it's given this a little bit of a fade in between the image and your border. Now, you can see the image, you can see the feathering where they blend together and there's your border. Now, there's also another thing you can do that's really neat with this. You can reuse this same picture frame on any image. The way you do that is you want to come over here to your image layer right click on it and go to replace contents. Click on that and then you can choose any image you want. Let's choose this one. And boom, there you go. You can adjust it a little bit to center it and you have a new image using the same picture frame. So what you want to do is when you get through creating your frame just be sure and save that file as a PSD file so you can open it and still work with these layers at a later time. So when your image is finished and you want to output a picture just go to save as, pick an area you want to save it at, choose a JPEG and we'll just call this flower, click save and OK. Then uh, if we go to where we saved that image and double click on it to view it, there you go. There's your picture. So I hope this has all been very helpful and it's a, a real neat way to create custom picture frames for your digital images. Um, a couple of different methods there. You can use these photos in emails, you can upload them to social networks, whatever you choose. Anyway, this is Robert with Odd Random Thoughts and we'll see you next time.